So hi guys, it's Dr. Parth Palan here and welcome to the last minute pearls for NEET PG examination. And today's subject is microbiome, one of my favorite subjects in NEET PG. I don't know why, but it was one of my favorite subjects. So yeah, the first thing, the first screenshot which you need to take, which float, the eggs which float of the organism, the helminths, uh, which float, the, the mnemonic is the fan, to take this, and the ones which are bile stained. It's fat cat. Okay, it's gets given in all the books, but I just put it in my twentieth book, and I I really found it very useful to revise in the last month. So I really want you also to remember this. Next, next again, the helminths, cystode, trematode, and nematode. The difference. It's very simple to remember, but yeah, they they can always ask you. You know, they they can give you a clinical scenario, and then they will. They might ask you that this is caused by, caused by which organism. So you might be knowing the organism, but you might not know. You might not be knowing if it's a cystode, trematode, and nematode. So this you need to remember. Next, next is uh, from Streptococcus, the autoimmune things like the markers which are same in them. So capsular or high hyaluronic or hyaluronic hyalur hyalur acid. So this is common in synovial fluid and cell wall proteins. It's myocardium. Group A carbohydrates and it's present in the cardiac valves. Similarly, all of this. So yeah, please take a screenshot of this. Then next, next we have in microbiome. This is a very very common thing, guys. Like uh, where they ask you if your GAMP is increased and where your protein synthesis is decreased. So this you need to remember. The mnemonic is K. Okay. And where the protein synthesis is uh, decreased, they will also ask you the reason for it. Like for these two, it's EF2 decrease, and for this two, where the effect is the 60S ribosome. And the mnemonic for this is PETS. Very important, guys. Please don't miss this. Next. Next, obviously, this I'm not going to read. You please figure it out yourselves. <laughs> But yeah, obligate aerobes. Facultative anaerobes, micro aerobes, micro aerophilic, obligative anaerobes. So, this is what you really need to remember. I know it's a lot of rata, but then you have to remember a few such things. And that's why this is the volatile stuff which I'm asking you to read in the last month. Next, next is hypersensitivity. I know this is a patho topic, but uh, you also need to revise and you also need to know type one, type two, type three, type four. This has to be. Very thorough, and this why I, why I have specifically put it in microbiome. See, because there is tubercle interest, lepro interest. Uh, there's so basically these are all the tests, uh, the tests which are related to microbiome per se. So it's it's better if you read it with microbiome. So yeah, this next next I would also want you to read is Rickettsia table because obviously you cannot miss the Rickettsia table, guys. It's a very important. It's a very easy thing if you go to see. It's not. It's not that difficult. I also used to feel very scared, you know, while reading that. Kya re yar? Kya padh liya? But no, it's a. It's a very easy table if you read them. Yeah. Next is the TB and leprosy. The micro counts. Like is se jada hua to plus one, plus two, all that, all that kind of stuff. That is very important. Very, very important. It is always asked. We often feel that we'll remember, but most of the times we don't remember. And even if we remember, we always get confused between TB and leprosy. So that is one thing we really need to think of, and we really, really, really need to revise. Next thing, what I would like you to remember is the malaria types. All the four types, it's given in your uh, microbiome books. So please revise that. All the types of malaria and all the characteristics of malaria, because malaria is a very common question. And it's a very common disease as well. So they they'll always focus on the common diseases in our population. So malaria and dengue, you have to be very thorough with them. And uh, then you have to remember all the filaria all the filaria basically the filaria table which is given in your microbiome book that with the sheath without the sheath the last two you know in the tail if the nucleus is present uh, it is like this so there's a whole a very nice table so you have to remember that table and uh, see for fungi what i would suggest is even if you don't read it like obviously you have to read but for the last and the volatile stuff you revise all the tables which are given in uh, our textbook that is anand narayan so tables are more than enough for fungi there's a general table specifying all the types of fungi 
and there are also you know subsequently general general fungi uh, then there is a systemic fungi so you you know that the tables are more than enough i feel for fungi and then obviously the the dreaded the most dreaded chapter uh, the antigen antibody reactions from general microbiome this i feel is somehow the most confusing for many people but once if again if you understand how that test is done and how that how the interaction takes place so try to remember it i uh, see that if you remember the concept will be really easy for you to remember but if you haven't understood the concept yet please don't i at least i feel now don't waste your time on understanding the concept because that is just a part of one subject and you have 19 subjects to read so now you can just refer to the chapter and uh, in that chapter also now is not the time to read the whole chapter you just need to remember the types of all reaction like precipitation reaction like all the other types of reaction you need to know them by name and by heart so i guess this was it from microbio guys so please read microbio it's a very scoring subject it's it's obviously a volatile subject but it's a very very scoring subject guys yes you can do it all the very best guys kill it